in your domain. I told you were kings and priests. I told you it's my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. My father wants to give it to you. Now, number, number four. No, that was number four. Number four, we give Satan authority to rule and reign in our lives. Now, I'm going to give you something real quick. We close now. The benefits of a dependent spirit. What does dependent mean? Dependent means I'm totally relying on God. I'm resting. I'm tired of being in confusion. That's why he said the children of Israel could not go into the promised land because they did not cease from their own labor. They were not trusting God. Amen. Amen. So the benefits, one of them is you know this one. When you know when you're I'm, I'm putting it this way. How do you know you're dependent on God? Number one is you all you know that Jesus also is God. He's absolute Lord of our lives in every area, material and natural. He, we know he's over everything, okay? He's Lord. He's absolute. Number two, we obey his voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit. When he becomes, when we become dependent, we obey the voice of the Holy Spirit without complaining. He tells you something to do. Why do I have to do that? Go and say, why you? Sometimes can we just go if he tells you to do something? Can you just go and do it? Wow. You know what frustrates parents? Is when you tell your children to do it and they say, why? 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 You tell them, I want you to do something. So, why? I got to, why? And as the parent, this is how we feel. You have to say, why? Why? Because I say it. That's how you feel. Why? I got to go to school. Bow, so you won't be no dummy. Yes, we ask why. Can you imagine if the Holy Spirit did this? Oh, my goodness. Be quiet. He said something. Ah, shut up. <laughs> but Lord, and then you put a muzzle on your mouth. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Can't get the words out. What did he do us like that? My Lord. When he gives us instructions, yeah. we just supposed to okay. do it without questioning. The reason we got bad relationships is because we so independent. Jesus. I got to get the last word. I got to say what, what's right. I got to do it. You must have a dependent spirit. Y'all, that's all I have for today on this because I know it's time and far spent. But we're here today. If anyone here that's not born again in this room, we want you, if you're here, you need to be saved. You know, it's kind of a rush trying to get the message out. We'll finish the message. That was introduction part one. But if you're here too, and you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you need God to heal you. Would you come? We were praying earlier this the atmosphere for the supernatural for miracles, for signs, for wonders. Some of you might have missed it on the first wave, you said, and missed it on the second wave, but here's the third wave. So God, I want it. You're here. God wants to give you this good pleasure. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. How many want the kingdom operating? How many already born again in this house? You already have the kingdom. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could what? Ask or even imagine. According to what? The power which is the kingdom which works in us. The first call I'm going to give everybody in this room, I'm going to try your hands. If you have been independent in your life, you have made so many independent decisions without seeking God. You've decided in your life that you kept, you've done things, financial decisions you shouldn't have done, you should have gotten into the world. Relationship, whatever it may be, <coughs> moved to the wrong place, took the wrong to anything. God said, don't do it. 
when you're the choice to rely upon your own intellect. God said today, the first place to start, I'm, you're not going to have to, that, that, it don't mean you, you're not saved. But what it means, you've been entrusted in your own self. If that's you, you say, I need prayer. I, I, I need prayer. I need God to forgive me. If that's you, would you stand? Stand wherever you are. I know some people have things. I know some people have. Because if you, if you had it, you wouldn't be in, you wouldn't be in certain dilemmas. Is that all? Is that all? I know it's more in here. I made some, some independent decisions and now you're chasing your tail. You're like wandering around in the wilderness. Yes, yes. Yes. If you, want, would you, if you have the next step of boldness, would you meet us at the altar? Come on, Pastor Cynthia. those that are sitting out in the audience, I want you to just begin to pray. I just want you to begin to pray and intercede for those that are at this altar. Just begin to pray and intercede. You say, well, I make all, I've made all the right decisions. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I want you to really pray. I'm good. But for those that are at this altar, before we start praying, I want you to make this, just begin to repent now. God to forgive you for making all the choices that's gotten you in the place that you're in. Proverbs 3 says, in all your ways, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways, do what? Acknowledge Him and what will happen. Is out now, break your path. If you're in a place of confusion, you don't know where to go, you need to right now just lift your hands to the Lord. So, Lord, forgive me. I, I've been dependent on my own self. I've been trusting my own wisdom. I'm tired now, Lord. I'm tired of chasing my tail, God. Right now, I come to you. I want you just cry out to you and let him know I'm tired. 